Spatial audio on Apple Music. Is it a gimmick or is it the next step in sound design for music? Let's discuss that. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Ah, this is your first time here. Thank you for stopping by. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back again and being a part of the Wizard Squad. If you are not a part of the Wizard Squad, hit that subscribe button and come on back every time. Bell notify yourself with all notifications so YouTube will sometimes tell you when a new video is coming out. Let's get on to the business at hand, which is spatial audio. Gimmick? Not gimmick. It's very interesting. This morning on both my Twitter account and my YouTube uh, community page, I put up a poll and I asked, is spatial audio a gimmick? And the results were exactly the same in reverse. <laughs> on Twitter, it was basically 60-40 no. And on my YouTube uh, community page, it was basically 60-40 yes. So why is spatial audio uh, dividing the people so much? And how are we going to understand uh, whether or not it's a gimmick? Well, okay, there are a few different ways to think about this. Back in the old days, uh, there was no spatial audio. There wasn't even any stereo. Most recordings up until about 1964, 65 were made in mono, which was just, you know, you just needed one speaker and it all came out of that. And then in the 60s, uh, the stereo came into being, but it was kind of like a new thing and not too many people had the equipment to produce a stereo field in their house, you know, so the Beatles would fool around with stereo mixes. And if you've ever listened to the Beatles and the stereo mixes of their songs, you'll hear that like guitars are way over here and voices are way over here and everything is just all over the place. And there's not really any sense to it. And they weren't actually taking it very seriously. And a lot of the time the Beatles themselves were not, uh, were not really present for the stereo mixes because the mono mixes were what mattered. But as time went on, stereo became the standard. Stereo became the standard into the 70s and into the 80s and the 90s and all the way up to where we are right now. Stereo has been the standard. Spatial audio could just be seen as the next step for music beyond stereo. Now, this has been done in the past. We've had quadraphonic sound where you know, we have four speakers instead of two speakers. And that was kind of a flash in the pan. It was around for a while and didn't really work out. It wasn't adopted as a standard by the folks who were making the music and the equipment didn't really fly off the shelves into everybody's homes. And for all intents and purposes, spatial audio is sort of the same thing. What spatial audio is attempting to do is to take a two-dimensional, well, two-dimensional signal, a signal that's coming from two speakers and make it sound like this, the sound is coming from all around you. Now, Dolby Atmos is at the center of this. And if you're familiar with Dolby Atmos in terms of uh, home theater or something like that, then you'll be familiar with the idea that Dolby Atmos not only has speakers on the left and right in front of you, as well as the center channel, as well as the subwoofer, as well as two, two or more speakers behind you. But it also has at least two speakers that are firing at the, at the ceiling and bringing the sound back down. And it really does create a all encompassing 3D kind of picture with the sound. That's real Dolby Atmos. But of course you can't recreate that in headphones. What is happening with headphones, digital signal processing is taking over and sort of taking that Dolby Atmos signal and mimicking the 3D space. Sometimes it's really successful. I've listened to a bunch of spatial audio tracks over the last, you know, four or five days. Sometimes it's very, it's very successful sometimes it's not. That's one thing that we have to get past if spatial audio is going to be something that people care about. On my AirPods Max, I have listened to a lot of spatial audio tracks and a lot of them are very good. The bands up on Cripple Creek uh, is a song that I've listened to hundreds of times and I love that song. And it really, uh, it really changed a great deal with spatial audio. All of a sudden, the feel of the room that the people were recording in was much more present and the positioning of the players was much more uh, pronounced. I also found with, uh, with a Billie Eilish, some Billie Eilish songs that the reverb was sort of just a dome all around me. So very impressive kind of sound. When most people hear spatial audio, they're like, oh my God, this is incredible. And 
It is, but there are some psychoacoustic things happening in your head when you're listening to spatial audio that uh, give you that effect. Okay, for one, you're used to listening to something that is basically a, a two-dimensional thing, and then it becomes three-dimensional, and it tricks your brain into believing that there is a sense of space. This is something that's gone on with gaming for many, many years. Many, many gaming headsets have attempted to recreate a three-dimensional sound, and over the years have become pretty good at it, uh, using digital signal processing. And that's basically what spatial audio is doing. For some recordings that I've listened to, for some live recordings that I've heard, it is very impressive and it's very fun. And actually I have now a, a Sonos Arc and two Sonos Play Ones in my home theater room right now. And that was the most impressive place that I've heard spatial audio because it was actually outputting a Dolby Atmos signal and stuff was firing at the ceiling and the, phys the physicality necessary to get real Dolby Atmos was there. And it was very impressive on a lot of the stuff that I listened to. In headphones, it wasn't quite as impressive to me, but still, it's a fun thing. Here's the rub. As with quadraphonic sound of years gone by and all kinds of different attempts to make music sound different, whether it's make it 5.1 audio or something like that, if the recording studios and the artists don't adopt this new thing as a way that they're going to record, where they're recording with Dolby Atmos in mind and mixing their tracks with Dolby Atmos as the intended way for the music to be heard, then Dolby Atmos is always going to be sort of a parlor trick. Now, whether or not that's a bad thing is up to you. Logistically, realistically, there are so many studios, there are so many artists who create in their bedrooms or in their basements or in their garage or whatever. There are so many studios that have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gear and an infrastructure that's built on mixing in stereo. The infrastructure shift that would have to happen in order to start mixing with Dolby Atmos in mind is huge. And most people who record music could not feasibly do it. I don't believe that Dolby Atmos is ever going to become the standard. Spatial audio will never be a standard thing. It'll be a fun little addition, and maybe, you pref maybe you'll find that you prefer to listen to music that way. But for me, you know, Apple has announced lossless audio as well. Lossless audio is now available on Apple Music, and lossless audio is a perfect reproduction of whatever came out of the studio once the artist was finished and was released to wherever it was released. It is a bit perfect representation of that piece of music. And we have never had access to that on a large scale in a digital format ever, not since CDs. Ever since we went to digital MP3, etc., etc., we have listened to lossy audio files. Audio files that have had things taken out of them so that the file size could be smaller. Now we have the full file. Now we have all the ones and zeros that have been created from the analog signals that went into the microphones and then got spat out the speakers. To me, that is a much more satisfying experience because I get to hear as best as possible with the equipment that I have or, or whatever, I get to hear exactly what the artist heard, exactly what the artist intended. And the purity of that is very, very valuable to me. That doesn't mean that spatial audio isn't fun. And I couldn't sit in my living room with the Dolby Atmos going and enjoy the heck out of hearing it. And if artists start making music with that in mind, however, they just, however they're able to do it, then that's great. But is spatial audio a gimmick? In my mind, yes. It is not a terrible gimmick. It's not evil. It's not anything like that. But it is a sort of parlor trick that Apple has offered us to give us a little bit something different to experience f with our music. And that's kind of cool. Eventually, I think it'll go the way of quadraphonic sound, etc., etc. Stereo it has been the standard for a long time. And if you have a great stereo system, an absolutely fantastic stereo system, two speakers can do the same thing that spatial audio is doing. 
all by themselves. The investment that you need to make in order to get the kind of equipment that could make that happen, the experience and knowledge that you have to have to set up your speakers in the right way, to set up your system in the right way, those are all things that you would have to have in order to, for that to be the case. But it is possible to have an all-encompassing surrounding experience where you can't hear where the music is coming from. It's coming from all around you. Spatial Audio gives that to everyone, regardless of really the equipment that they have. You let me know what you think down in the comments below. Spatial Audio, trick, gimmick, not, future of music, let's discuss, okay? Thanks so much for being here. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.